Hi, and welcome to Nourishable. I'm Dr. Lara. In this mini lecture, I'm going to go over just some foundations in neuroscience that will serve as a framework to understand the neurobiology of food intake. Okay, so first, super basic, we're just going to go over the anatomy of a neuron. So here's kind of your typical neuron. These regions up here, these are called the dendrites. You can kind of think of them like the branches of a tree. So the dendrites are going to be receiving signals from other neurons. Those signals are then going to go and get integrated in the cell body of the neuron. We can see the cell body has a nice nucleus in the middle. And then once the cell body has integrated the signals, it is then going to send signals down its axon. Those signals um, are called action potentials. So our neuron will send an action potential down its axon, and though that axon is then going to um, interface with perhaps other neurons or other tissues to stimulate or suppress um, various outcomes. So that is our general neuron. Dendrites gets the signals in, those signals get integrated in the cell body, and then the neuron will send action potentials down the axon. So everything is going in this direction here, Ooh, like that. Okay, so how do neurons communicate with each other? The language that neurons use to communicate between each other and between other tissues are called neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are chemicals. So in this image, we're looking at one neuron we're looking at a space, and then we're looking at another neuron. This could be a neuron, or it could also be a tissue like a muscle cell, for example. For now, let's just pretend it's another neuron. So this space in between the two is called a synapse. And so then this first neuron here, this is called the presynaptic neuron because it's before the synapse. And then we have, this is the postsynaptic neuron down here. So the presynaptic neuron has sent a signal down its, axon, uh, down its axon. It sent a signal, an action potential down its axon. And as the, that action potential arrives at the tip of the axon, it's going to release these chemicals, these neurotransmitters. And it's gonna spit out a whole bunch of neurotransmitters into this synapse. And those neurotransmitters are then going to go and bind to receptors on the, the postsynaptic neuron, and that is going to cause some changes and cause signaling to happen within this postsynaptic neuron. Now, there are many different kinds of neurotransmitters out there. Some of the neurotransmitters are excitatory neurotransmitters, so that means that they're going to make the postsynaptic neuron more likely to fire an action potential. So those are excitatory neurotransmitters. There's also other types of neurotransmitters that are inhibitory. So these inhibitory neurotransmitters would make it less likely that the postsynaptic neuron is then going to ultimately send out a signal, send out an action potential. So there's a whole array of neurotransmitters that we can view as either excitatory or inhibitory. Um, and so that is how neurons are going to communicate between each other is through the language of neurotransmitters. The other important thing here to keep in mind as well is that the postsynaptic neuron or the postsynaptic tissue, it has to have receptors on it that specifically bind to this neurotransmitter or this signaling chemical.